All right, and we are live. How's everyone out there doing, and how are you doing, Josh? Hey, man, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Anytime, dude. Anytime. You you know how much I loved the you know zero issue zero and issue one of T Bird and Throttle, and especially you know issue two. Man, it, it's the the build up is strong. The build up is strong. I'm just saying. I this is going to end <laughs> with one massive climax. I can already tell. Yeah, uh, issue three is going to be um, kind of a lot going on, and then issue four is going to be. Yeah, I can't wait for people to read it. Um, I'm excited. And we have a Gorgonite in chat. What's up, Gorgonite? I uh, hope you're excited to hear about some badass T-Bird and Throttle. All right, so what can you tell us that has changed from your last outing to this outing there, Josh? You mean as far as what's coming up in issue three? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, what's coming up in issue three, things you might have you know, decided to change, like uh, style-wise, writing-wise, anything like that. Anything that might kind of throw the reader for a loop if they've been following the T-Bird and Throttle saga from issue zero to now. Okay, well, so if you've been reading, if you've read T-Bird uh, zero, one, and two, you know that part of the story is being told uh, in flashback. You're getting pieces of um, his past and kind of what led him to where he is. Um, that all culminates in book three, which is coming up, which is what I'm trying to fund right now. Book three, you're going to get the final pieces of the puzzle of what happened, what the incident was, what led up to it, and the fallout from it. Um, it's going to be like the can't miss issue for sure. Um, uh, I'm really excited to like really finally get to do this part of the story because it's like been in my head for like so long so i'm excited excited about it and i i really hope people will check it out and i think um it's gonna be a fun ride for everybody so all right now for those who haven't read issue two i'm gonna try to keep this as spoiler three a uh, spoiler free as possible but uh we'll say this is issue two you left us off with a cliffhanger so Will the, I guess you'd say, uh, suspense pay off? Uh, let's see. What was the cliffhanger? Okay, yes. Okay. Sorry to think back for a second. I'm so stuck on issue three mode right now. Um, oh, sorry. Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> so, yeah. There's sort of, I guess, kind of two cliffhangers. You know, you have uh, Amy, you know, who, used to, who was formerly known as Throttle. She has a run-in with um, uh, Jack Gruesome. Um, and then, of course, T-Bird is, uh, his, he was dropped off on the moon, and uh, then things happen. Um, yes, you are going to, you will learn, I'll just say this, you may not fully learn what happens to Amy just yet in issue three. Uh, you may have to wait till issue four. Um, but you're still going to get some of her, because there's going to be some flashbacks with her that are important so she'll still be in the issue um one thing about issue three though is that emily's going to come to the forefront a little bit and her story's going to play out um in a big way all right and so with and since you're segueing into emily i Take it. She with. Uh, I kind of also get a feeling that this is almost a, if you will, a passing of the torch story where, you know, in a way, uh, T Bird is getting to a point where he may actually, if you will, like my personal feeling. I don't know anything, folks. This is pure speculation, and I don't want you know if you don't want to give me anything, you know, Josh. But I kind of feel uh -huh. this is, is almost a passing of the torch with uh, T Bird at the end of this, will have accepted his role as being from a bygone era and Emily kind of taking up the role as the main hero. Uh, you were half right. Half right? All right. You're half, yeah. I, I, speculation is now going to be, you know, <laughs> like, what part was I right with? <laughs> so you see, that just makes for you... 
folks, you gotta get issue three to and four to be able to find out what I was right with. But all right, uh, we're gonna now kind of go uh, to basically handling you know issue what's in issue three and the perks at the same time. So let's see. Start out with the featured perk, which is the uh, T Bird and Throttle Book Three twenty dollar level. Uh, what's all in that? You're basically just getting uh, the book, um, getting issue three. This is for people who have backed before and they have everything already. So they just need issue three. That's for that. Um, and we're not at the point. We're not at the point of announcing stretch goals or anything like that yet. So, um, so maybe there'll be something extra at some point, but uh, we'll see. Alrighty. And then the first perk they show in there is book three digital. So I take it that's the uh, legit physical copy that you're getting with the twenty dollar perk. Uh, yeah. All right. All righty. And moving on to the digital booster pack of zero, one, two, and three. So that is all the stories that are all I should say all issues of the story that has been told to that point in digital form. Correct. Any, like, extra digital art or anything that's going to be shipped with that, or just the books? Um, yeah, it'll be just the books. Alrighty. Now to kind of, before we go on to the next perk. So, with T-Bird and Throttle 3, are there going to be any new introductions, like any new characters introduced, uh, things of the such? Um, new characters. Uh... Yeah, sort of. Yes. There will be... Um, they may not play out fully until later on, but yes, there'll be some new introductions and there'll be a, a new villain scene in a flashback. All right. So, uh, with issue three, uh, like we've already touched on how, you know, basically the, the culmination of it, you know, how this will hopefully... Fill, it, fill you in on the cliffhangers and everything. Are we going to get more like past action or current action, like standard superhero flair with T Bird? Or <clears throat> uh, yes, okay. So issue three will have a flashback that has some one of like an old, uh, I'll be in a, like a, a sort of an action scene. But issue four is the one that's going to be the big uh, superheroics. Um. We, oh. This one's going to be the final pieces of like how everything happened, you know, sort of what led to where everything is, and then four will be kind of just the the boom, you know. Um, yeah, this oh. whole thing has been this whole thing is basically setting up sort of a return to the you know it's a it's a reconstruction. It's like it, getting thing, people back to where they need to be, you know, for the traditional type of stories. Um, because there's a lot more T Bird and Throttle like planned after even these four. Like this four is sort of just like the introductory origin arc. Um, oh. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, first up, we got a Matt Ray's in chat. What's up, Matt? Uh, he does the book Expositioner, I do believe. I hope I got it right this time. And then you have Gorgonite, who said. What is the synopsis for those who have failed to either, you know, hear about T-Bird or Throttle or couldn't pick up the story, you know, up to this point or anything? You know, what is basically like the Cliff Notes, no spoiler free version that you can give to explain the events up until now? Okay, so uh, the story follows uh, a former astronaut named Mitchell Maddox. Um, on a mission to the moon, he has, there's he's, there's a battle with the moon men, which are an alien race, which you don't know much about yet. But um, he's injured, and he's there. He finds this artifact in the crash ship, and they dub it the engine. And what it does, it bonds with him, saves his life, and it gives him these superpowers. So when he returns to Earth, he decides to become a superhero, known as T-Bird. Um, but then... 
because of the unpredictable nature of this engine that's inside of him now, there's a horrific accident that basically ruins his career and ruins his life. So the story picks up 10 years later um, as he's raising uh, his daughter alone, single daughter alone. Um, not a single daughter. He's a single, <laughs> single father raising his daughter alone. Um, and then he's trying to put the pieces back and rebuild his career and try to get it started again. And then something, things from his past start to reemerge. So this is the story picks up here as he's trying to, you know, get going again. And then, you know, stuff hits the fan and that's where the story picks up. All right. <clears throat> now real quick, we got to touch on your tribute covers cause it's definitely like, I'm half tempted to plunk down the extra five for the alternate cover just because I think they are pretty sweet. So we're going to start with the She-Hulk cover with Throttle for issue zero. Yeah. So what gave you the idea for the various covers in the first place? Um, well, because the series itself is sort of about comics – um, it's sort of about my love for comics or what they could, used to be or could be. Um, I really wanted to like homage like the, the, the stuff I loved, what inspired me, um, just some great you know covers of the past. And that's something I've been wanting to do for a while, so this is like the perfect opportunity to do it. Um, I started with my favorite one, which was the, the Dark Knight one for issue, uh, issue one. The, the... That's one about... All right. It, Give it a what was that? Uh, it's a, if you're looking, I think you're watching the stream. Oh, okay. Am I jumping ahead? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the stream itself is like, uh, watching it is like 30 seconds, I think, behind. So, okay. It, give it a quick minute, it'll pop up to like when we get there. I will be on the uh, Dark Knight Returns cover. Okay. Well, anyway, that was the first one that popped in my mind because I love that cover. You know, it's like a whole lot. So, like, I've been wanting to do that one for a while. So I did that one. And then, like, I thought the New, the New Mutants one was it's a really popular image. And I thought that'd be fun to do with my characters. But the She-Hulk one, that was the hardest one to decide on. Because, obviously, the other two, I wanted to feature Throttle. Because she wasn't on the other two, really. Um, and But there's it's funny how few iconic covers there are with just, like, a, a female on them. Mm. Um like the ones that really that really spring to mind. I, I did a lot of searching, and like that was the Shiok were the ones who were the most fun, and they just I wanted a fun cover that was just you know, um, not too serious. And I just thought that was the perfect uh, the perfect image. Mm-hmm. Because you know, eighties She Hulk was the most fun. <clears throat> yeah, she really was. All right, <clears throat> now. Since we already touched on it, let's tell people about the 40 and the $45 perk, which is getting issues 0, 1, 2, and 3 physical. Then the $45 perk is the same thing, but with the, the covers that we were talking about, correct? Right, yeah. All right. And next perk is the original art page. What can you tell me about that? Uh, basically, you'll get um, a randomly selected page uh, of original art from the book. Um, it's they measure like eleven by seventeen. Um, they'll be fully inked, black and white art. Um, I've I already sold through ten of them, and I, I put up another tier for five more. And I, I really want to limit them because I want to make sure everyone gets a really good page, a really nice, fun page. Um, so I believe there's still five left right now. Um, Yep, zero five claimed. Yeah. Yep, so. All righty. And then you have the 9 by 12 bust commission. So is it yeah, like an actual statue type deal? No, no, no. It's a, a bust as in head to like waist. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, il illustration, yeah. So you just pick character of your choice. It could be whoever you want. Um, but yeah, it would be like a head to waist illustration, black and white. I'm by 12. Um, so, yeah. Apparently, I blame chat for something. I don't, I don't, don't know. But, uh, all right. Uh, on to the next.
next one, which is the original Art T Bird Moonman for two hundred. So is that like a uh, picture you sp specifically drew? No, that's or a splash page from issue two. That's a one of the pages from issue two. Um, It's, so I'm not gonna lie. I've only seen it colored, so seeing it black and white, I thought it was new. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, it's just uh, an actual page from the book. Um, nice. Just, yep. And then original T Bird art with the monster. Is that the monster from uh, issue zero? Yes. Awesome. Also for two hundred. So it's basically the same page, same same idea. It's like the you're selling specific pages out of the book for this perk. As uh, that I take it, they also come with uh, physical oh. copies of the book and everything. Yeah, you get all the all the books, the variant covers, and issue three. All right, and then get drawn. Explain that one. Yeah, I just put that up today because I've done it before in the past. Um, it's basically you'll get your likeness drawn into the book as a, a character in the background or uh, whatever. Uh, you'll get two to three panels. Um, and you'll also receive uh, the original art that you appeared on. Um, I did this for, yeah, I did it for the last two books. So it seems to be really popular with people. All right. And. With the that one being the, see, uh, da, da, da. yeah. All right, I was like, wait a second. Next one is original cover art, book two, alternate. So, is that the original art for book two? Yes, for the the New Mutants homage cover, correct. Alrighty, and the one of a kind cover for seven fifty. Yeah, I will draw a one-of-a-kind cover for you. You decide like what you want on your cover. I mean, um, I did this before for book one, and the winner didn't even want T-Bird and Throttle. They wanted themselves as a superhero. So I'll do but most whatever you want um, within reason, and you'll, I'll print up one copy just for you. Uh, it'll be the only one in existence, and you'll get the original art for it too. All right. That's kind of cool, actually. And sure enough, you can see where you the the perks that people already jumped at to grab. Oh wow, the original cover art of the She Hulk cover and the Batman Dark Knight Returns covers have been already grabbed up. Mm -hmm. And the original two of the nine by twelve color commission for two fifty. Original cover art for three gone. Wow, you well if nothing else, <laughs> you <laughs> definitely gotten some of the. The nicer perks have been flying off the shelf now. It's just time, a matter of getting the, uh, if you will, <laughs> the rest of it back, which I see happening because T Bird and Throttle has a great story, fantastic characters, like we were joking about before the stream. You know, the, the reconstruction of the deconstructed hero. Everything that people, you know, really want to see make a return in comic books yeah i mean that's it's sort of that's sort of the goal you know is to not i'm not seeing what i want to see and i hear that from other people too so you know i'm making the book that i would want to read and and have, like i said having read issue two now oh man oh man like folks if you haven't read this book you need, you need it in your life Head over to Indiegogo and back this book now specifically. So you could, and, and you want to get, even whether it's digital or physical, you want to get the, the full story if you haven't read it. Because there's a lot going on and there's things that if you're not paying attention, you will miss. Believe me, I had to ask Josh, you know, well not so much ask, but confirm, if you will, before the, the stream started on something that uh, I had noticed with issue one going into two. Yeah, you figured out something pretty early, and like, that's awesome because I I sort of designed it for people to put pieces together. So if you are paying attention, um, and you uh, you can probably figure things out before I fully reveal them, which is which is what I want to happen. I want people to like you know look into it and put it all together. I think it's part of the fun. 
Oh, yeah, it's that whole, like, uh, murder mystery, who done it, and everyone trying to figure out who the murderer <laughs> is before the movie actually, or TV show actually reveals it. Right. I guess you can kind of say it's a uh, interactive ordeal. <laughs> but, uh, all right, let's see. And, of course, you know, the, the, the non-stop praise, big splash praise to people saying how much they love T-Bird and Throttle, and they are all correct. So, one of the things yeah, I've, I've kind of noticed is that about, I guess you could say, like, T-Bird, if you will, he's kind of got, like, I guess you could say he, he strikes me as having a personality that is a mix of, like, I guess you could say Superman and almost like Green Lantern. I noticed that today, where it's like, He's got that military gun ho attitude that you expect from classic Hal Jordan, mm -hmm. but with the morals and sensibilities almost of, you know, Superman. For for the most part, I mean, he's not like it's not a complete matchup, but you get the, you can kind of, I, I get a vibe. Was that intentional? Um, sort of. Yeah, I mean, like probably not so much. I mean, Green Lantern, even though. Because I did only because I never read Green Lantern, so I'm not really too familiar about Hal's characteristics. But uh, Superman, for sure, he's definitely one of them. I mean, it's kind of the idea of like what happened if you know if something Superman did ended in the death of Lois Lane. Like, how would he cope with that, and how would he go on? You know, um, except you know, you know, minus how they did it in Injustice. Oh, did it happen? I've <laughs> it's uh, the, been a, the, the I'm so premise... familiar with. The premise for Injustice Gods Among Us is uh -huh. that the Joker basically causes Superman to kill Lois Lane. Oh, uh, okay. And because of that, where you see T-Bird carries that guilt around with him and is very remorseful and just kind of shuts down, Superman does mm -hmm. the exact opposite. He more or less goes full totalitarian, takes over the planet, and just becomes a guy that you don't want to have anything to do with. Like, all the heroes that side with him... Well, of course, Batman doesn't side with them. Let's, let's, this is Batman we're talking about. But, like, you, you have basically, like, a hero civil war, if you will, amongst DC. Like, that's, their, that's, that's DC's version of civil war, if you will. Except, uh -huh. instead of it being, you know... Involving, like, mutant registration and whatnot, it involves Superman going rogue. And it's... That's what I can describe it as. Is Superman believing that he's doing the right thing by removing people's ability to have choice to be criminals, if you will. Something along those lines. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to really explain. You'd have to, like, read it for yourself. Gotcha. All right. But, uh... That was just something I, I, I noticed. It's like, huh. Um. Let's see. So I. Oh, uh, man. I, I. It's really hard to ask questions about the book because I don't want to give anything away for those who haven't read the book because I have like 50 million questions, all of which are spoiler. Well, we can do a couple of. We can do a couple of them. I mean. Maybe it'll get someone interested in actually picking up the book, you know, so. All right, well. So, all right, all right. This will be a bit of speculation once again, going into the whole trip to the moon. That was for him to pretty much get the kick in the ass he needed, wasn't it? Uh, You're saying it was done to, like, you know. Motivate him to right. become who he once was once more. No. No, so that really was like... Okay. Alright. That, that's... I like that. I like where that's going. <laughs> that That is... You have my attention, sir. Wait, wait how's, how's, how's it going? You, you, at first you had my uh, curiosity, now you have my attention. <laughs> I saw that meme earlier and I was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot all... I haven't seen that movie in years. Only seen it once, but I mean it's a good movie. Just I, I there's only so much I can handle, and that that, that movie pushed it to where I was like, okay, great watch once, not watching it again. What what movie is this? Uh, Django Unchained. Oh okay, yeah, I haven't seen it. 
oh man, that that's where that line's from. Leonardo DiCaprio says at one point, uh, his character's like, first you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. <laughs> But, uh, all right, um, I do know, uh, you are on a time crunch. How much time do we have left? Um, we have about five minutes. All right, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. So, anything else you want to let people know before we have to let, uh, you know, excuse you so you can do what you got to do, sir? Um, just, you know, I hope everyone will go check out the campaign and, um, Give it a shot. I've got the first, I've got the 16 page prequel up there for free, and I've got the first 30 pages of issue one up for free. All right. So there should be, should be plenty of material for you to, like, you know, make a judgment if it's worth right. your time. Or, um, yeah, I appreciate everyone look at it. Give it a, give it a shot. Say that, say the last part again. Oh, I said I would appreciate it if everyone just take, check it out and give it a shot. Um, right. Not a problem. I had multiple things going on at once. But, uh, oh, right. And like I said, I mean, it, it's definitely a great read. And issue three is definitely going to answer more questions and probably leave us with more questions to, that will need to be answered in four. Is that the plan? Uh, sounds about right. <laughs> Outstanding. But I promise issue three will deliver. You'll get some some definite answers. So... That's what I was hoping for, because, you know, like I said, issue, well, well, definitely issue one, dude. When I was done reading that, I was, like, sitting there almost like a crackhead, like, <laughs> hey, man, I, I need more. I, I, you, you can't leave me hanging like that. I, I, I didn't get my fix, man. <laughs> well, there Wait. you go. See? <laughs> Which I think is, you know, the, definitely the, the goal of any writer to leave the reader whether it's comic books or regular books or whatever it's to leave them wanting more to leave them wanting to be able to be like hey you know what i want more of this come on man give it to me (laughs) oh i also want to point out too for everybody if you haven't familiar with each book except for the zero issue is 50 plus pages Um, so you're getting like you know a lot of content like Book one is 60 pages. Book two is 56. Issue three, I don't know the exact count, but it'll be at least 50. So, And I think I'm totally uh, going to leave with this. Because I still got uh, three minutes with you on here. Let me pop up OBS real quick so I can switch to the... There we go. The T-Bird and Throttle Sketch Odyssey. Which Mr. Josh Howard here was kind enough to sign for me. That's actually been part of the background for a while now. So, oh, yeah. um, on the first couple pages, are these like the initial sketches that led to the creation of T Bird? Was this like the like initial idea that you had for him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are, I mean, this is, I don't have the very first sketch I ever did that was done like at the store I worked at the time and probably ended up in the trash, but these are the very next ones. Like when I was just playing around with the idea, the feel of, you know, what it was going to be. Yeah. That's all there. Nice. And I I like how you always stuck to like the incorporating the engine into the artwork and always giving him like a, uh, very, I guess you could say, specific look. Like, you could tell you really had no problems. And then, of course, the the various ways Emily, or I could say incarnations Emily went through. Mm-hmm. And by the looks of it, the one back here is the one, the closest one that came out to roughly what you wanted, or what you end up with, I should say. Right. And monkey wrench. When's Monkey Wrench gonna come in? <laughs> God, I, I see. I have been monkeyless, sir. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, I've had, like I said, it's been around, it's floating around for twenty years. You know, so like it's, at certain points, it's had weird iterations where I was just, you know, depending what I was 
going through or what I was on at the time, you know, like, as far as like my what I was into, you know, as far as like entertainment or cartoons. I don't know. I would play with different versions. Like sometimes it'd be more, you know, a lighter. Sometimes it'd be darker. You know, it just it's been around so long. It's kind of gone through all these different versions. So definitely, and I, like including masked versions and so on and so forth. But all right, it's seven thirty, so I know you got to get. You know, get running and everything, but I do appreciate having you on. As yeah, always, man. you know you are always welcome on Meeting of the Minds. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me again. Um, just thanks for your time and letting me do my spiel. I appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. And real quick, tell people where they can find you. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Joshua Howard. Um, website is joshhoward.net. Also on Instagram at Josh underscore Howard. And of course on Indiegogo. So that's it. All righty. All right. Well, with that, I will go ahead and let you, you know, skedaddle, do what you got to do. And I will turn this from probably your standard meeting of the mind to closer to a game stream where I continue to pitch T-Bird and throttle. All right, man. Thanks. You have a good night. You too, Josh. All right. Later. But once again, folks, you know you want to get some T-Bird and Throttle in your life. Like I said, it is a story where your classic superhero, which in today's day and age is constantly being deconstructed, is reconstructed into something that is a bit different. It's and and, and while it does you know have tropes that can be viewed as you know classic, it does its own thing. It has its own twists, spins, things like that that'll keep you hooked from page one to page 100 and beyond. You know, while you're going through the issues. And this will definitely be one book that you'll want to, once you get issues 0, 1, 2, and 3, and of course 4, which is the last book in the series, you will... Be happy to sit there and shotgun the whole series front to back, which is always a good thing to find with comic books. Almost like as bad as it sounds, the old uh, last last book that I remember really doing that with, for instance, was like Red Robin Collision. Great read as well if you haven't done that. But like, or like the old uh, what I was gonna say where the really apparent would be the old Marvel vs. DC where you had to read several issues to know what's going on. It was several issues long. Several pages. <laughs> you just, oh, everything you wanted out of a book and then some. Definitely worth it. And I can't say that, you know, you, uh, all I gotta say is Josh Howard is not responsible for you Calling into work so you can stay home and read comic books. I'm just saying. that That's how good T-Bird and Throttle is. You will call into work just so you can stay home and read comic books. It will happen. Alright, let's... Yeah. Yeah. Kind of trying to, eat. <laughs> trying to eat dinner before the stream, but it didn't quite work out. So I'm kind of doing a bit of both at the same time. But... That is not a problem. Overcome, adapt, evolve. All right. Now to find what I will play. I will say I did finally play some of that uh, Split Gate Arena. Oh man, if I could get that working without the lag. I'll maybe try to give it a shot again. One sec. Unfortunately, I kind of did forget about my fries, so they're a bit uh, crispy. That's why I'm shutting the mic down real quick while I get the game going. And I mean extra crispy. Like, whoops, I totally forgot about my fries. I'm just trying to do my thing. <laughs> Come on. So... Having now 
played Splitgate. The best way I can describe this game is Halo meets Portal. And it is a lot of fun. Like, I was getting down on it earlier. Got two wins. Um, I got into two matches. Got two wins. And then proceeded to get my ass handed to me the next five matches. It was hilarious. I'm not even trying to say it wasn't. Like, I got this. I got this. Oh, I don't got this. I don't got this. Um, mommy? <laughs> Oh, man. But, all I gotta say is, though, definitely, y'all need to check out T-Bird and Throttle. Great fun, great story, great characters. It'll definitely be a experience. I, I am definitely looking forward to when I get the opportunity to get and to play the uh, wait there we go it switched it switched to me alright yeah. uh. Oh, well, let me adjust that, because if it's loud for me, it's got to be loud for y'all. There we go. Alright, let's hopefully I, I, let's hope I don't have lag this time. Or let's hope I don't have any lag. Upside, at least now I don't have my cat trying to get to my what's left of my gyro. Aww. Oh. There we go. Uh, let me get that back to that. All right. Oh man. <laughs> Shut your face, Bob. Your face. Well then, mute me, because I'm also streaming hey, at the Bob, same time. Bro. Well. Hey. Hey, Bob. Meh. Hey, Bob. No, listen. That was funny. I was like, oh, well, I, was, I was waiting. Okay. The told listen, and then nothing came through. <laughs> nah. What I can do, though. Let's see. Uh, All right, hopefully that fixes that. Hopefully now, uh, nope. Uh. Uh, testing, testing, testing. All right, there we go. I, I get that. that. That's not cool. Like all jokes aside, that's not cool. Alright, and... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Fucking A, man. I'm trying to... Sh 
This game's just too graphically intensive. Gain the lead. Only one game again, cause unfortunately lag. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, lag. Lost the lead. <sighs> this is just getting annoying. Tied the leader. Lost the lead. No. Nope. I know. I was hoping maybe because I was having a because playing great lead. earlier and was doing fine. Now it's like I'm going to lag. You can't play me and stream at the same time because I want to be an annoying game. That's too graphically intensive for your rig Lost to stream. Ah. Tied the leader. Lost the lead. Uh. Tied the leader. Lost the lead. Alright. Oh, so much for that idea. I tried. I wanted it to work too. Because it's a fun game. It really is. Yes, you know, I can't stream. It no want to stream. Uh, yeah, so much for that idea. Kind of disappointed in that. Well, I really want to play that. All right. Well, I guess since that isn't working, on to the next game. Whatever it shall be, it, it might even end up oblivion. We we don't know yet. It could be anything, really. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> no, I can't. Stream MGS5 because that's too graphically intensive of a game. Excuse me, and I have yet to have it set up to where I can stream the PS1 yet. Man, let's see. Oh, can't. That's right, I totally forgot about that. Uh, Hmm. No, that's six. Well, that's that's. We will play a Final Fantasy, but we'll, we'll play a different Final Fantasy. I've yet to start this Final Fantasy. I haven't played this Final Fantasy in years. I think the last time I played this thing was when it originally came out. On the PlayStation 1 as a part of Anthology. Which, man, Final Fantasy Anthology back in the day was the shit.
honestly, I totally forgot you sent me that message, Gorgonite, and the sad thing is I've been sitting here talking the whole time with my mic up. Didn't even realize it. Chuck! Get in the call! Or get in the Discord. You know how, you know what I mean. <laughs> Alright, oh. And do do. Oh. Uh. The Bat Cave. Alright. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I got. You're you're in the Discord, Bork. Ah. Uh, yo yo yo. What is up, Chuck? What's up, sir? Uh, Josh, is is Josh with us? Uh, he actually had to leave early. Oh. He had some other things going on, but you know we did some chilling. Got the I, I finally read issue two. Oh Is my goodness! You, dude, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It is awesome. Dude, uh, like the cliffhanger. That's all I gotta say. That the, that cliffhanger. The uh, the thing is for like for me, I am uh, like he, he's an instant back for for issue three. Mm. So. Um, you, you know, it's a shame I missed him. You know, uh, I gotta get him on once once he launches and stuff like that because we gotta shill him hard. Um, That's for true. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you want somebody who fulfills and gets him, uh, gets his stuff, uh, like us, you know, like rags and you know, yeah, Josh Howard, JDA, those are those are the guys that come through on their projects. So, oh yeah. And we have a Neo Star in chat. Oh, hey, Neo. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. I've been kind of under the weather the last few days. I, I popped a muscle in my back. Ooh. Uh, like, really bad. So I, I've been actually, like, laying down and haven't been really able to move. So uh, my, I went to the doctors today. So they finally are going to get me to physical therapy on Monday. After all this time, and uh, they did apply for, uh, they did uh, put in for FMLA, so, which is good. Nice. Yeah, so that way I have coverage and stuff like that. You know, just just for the sure fact, you know, you know, we got we got a, <laughs> I got a lot going on, and I got to be healthy. I can't. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't know if you noticed that I like, I switched from drinking regular Dr Pepper to diet, so. I've been being more active. I finally broke the 190 floor. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah I'm 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 still at 250. I, I kind of floated back to the uh, orange vanilla coke just because my stress levels have been really high at work. So, oh, understandable. Mm -hmm. right, that's okay. I finally invested in a uh, decent headset real quick. I, I got to fill you in on this. So now I have a wireless headset. And so now, when I want to go get coffee, I can stay in the conversation and not be, you know, like, so what did I miss? Well, it's getting awesome. coffee. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Because I'm about well, to have to do know, that. So, yeah, you know, uh, hopefully here soon, too, uh, the next, uh, here in the next few weeks here, we should hear where we're at with Ginger, because uh, hopefully she should be almost done soon with, um, you know, uh, uh, the changeling, so that, that way we can kick into gear back into Sporkman. Definitely. Why? You know. And of course, you know, Meeting of the Minds is not Meeting of the Minds without a obligatory Sporkman chill. I'm just saying. Oh, it is of not, course. Not Meeting of the Minds <laughs> without that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, dude. I will say this, though. And, and the, I will say that one downside to you know, when you're talking to a creator about their book is, it's like, like, well, 
I want to talk about it, but you know everything that's going to happen, so I'm like, any speculation can be instantly answered. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I had some speculation. I was like, so, uh, a lot of because <laughs> I had managed to put who the, the, uh, the Jack guy was, uh, was it, I don't uh, mutilated Jack or something like that. I can't remember his name. I've only read it once, and I read it as quickly as possible so I could get, be prepared for the stream. The, you know, issue two. Issue two, okay. Uh, he he hooked me up with it today, and I was just like, oh, ha, 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 ha. And, yeah. and, and even though I'm planning on backing three, he's still going to hook me up with a, a digital copy of three so I can read it and review it. I can't wait. Uh, I, I can't wait. I was like, if it sucks, man, prepare to be roasted. I will roast you, and I will hold the fact that issues zero through two were amazing pieces of art, and... So well loved. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you know, and that's what's really frustrating. That like he, I, I can't believe like people made the comment of, "Oh, well, I'm not going to back his project because he's going over to Indiegogo." Dude, the guy is freaking amazing. I don't care where he's going to put his project. I am there. Right? I, you you know, it's like really come on, man. If you really like uh, somebody's work, it shouldn't matter where they go. And not to mention, I mean, Josh does a good job, and believe me, it's hard. It's hard for me as well. But he does a good job of avoiding the culture war drama, mm -hmm. and yeah. and you know, that right there should be enough reason to back his book. Gorgonite, yep. don't you say a word. Don't you don't don't you don't you dare say a word. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. You know, and, and you know, I said something to the the one person last night. They were posting about. You know how they're closing their wallets to the CG projects, and I said, I said, I'm doing the same thing. It, it's going to CG people that are proven, that have proven their money. You, you know, fulfilling their projects. You know, I'm gonna back like Wenger. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, Sean. You, you know, uh, Cody, who, whoever. Uh, you, you know, I'm on the fence with some of the bigger guys, but like the smaller people. The people like Asami, next issue of Asami comes out, I'm getting it right away because he, you, you know, the smaller guys have gone, come through. And, and so that was worth the read? Oh, Asami? Yes. Oh, yes. 100%, bro. 100%. It was beautiful. So, nice. you know, it, that, and to me, that's where I'm going to put my money. I'm going to put my money on people that are proven people that get their projects out. Like JDA, you know, uh, Doug Garrett, the next, you know, the next issue of, you know, whatever comes out, you know, uh, uh, I, I still didn't get a chance to do Unbreathable Skunk Girl just because of, you know, uh, some stuff fund wise, but I really want to back it. Like Gilly, Pistola, I read Pistola. My God, that was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful comic. Um, oh. I don't know if you got a chance to read that one yet. No, I have um, not. Uh, G Gilly is a, a fantastic writer. Um, I'll have to hook you up uh, with Wraith and uh, um, Pistola. Fantastic, fantastic stories, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so, you know, I I'm going to back those. Those are the kind of comics I want to back. Those are the kind of people I want to support. I want to support people who, you know, are proven people. You know, uh, that's the same thing with... You know, Gorgon gets his stuff out. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Neo gets something of his. Shinobi Raccoon. These are the people I'm going to support because they stay out of the drama. They, mm -hmm. they What they want to do is they want to per push out good comics. Well, and that's part of the reason, like, you know, and I know you haven't been on lately, so you kind of, like, I think you've been on, like, once or twice since I've implemented, like, I, I know it can't be 100%, but uh, the whole keeping the culture war out of the stream as much as possible and that's part of the big selling point for a lot of these books is you know in a lot of these uh writers is you know their books are not going to be culture war you know books they're going to just be hey we what we want which is good comic books good reads you know a lot of fun because that's that's what made comic books for a lot of people was good yeah. storyline fun you know didn't it didn't, it, 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 I guess the best way that I can put it is, is it enlightened us, not preached to us. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like I read, you know, I, I read the other. I I just f refinished uh, 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 J. Michael Straczynski's uh, run on Spider Man. All on right. ASM. And I don't know if you read that series. It was uh, uh, right before One More Day. Um, no, nope. it was a fan. It was that's where the uh, Spider Man. You know what? Like when Captain America is standing up and he's doing that big quote to Spider Man about responsibility. And it's right before Civil War. So that's where he does that really big quote about politics and, you know, doing what's right and standing up and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know. And to, to me, that is, you know, quintessential, you know, that's what we should be doing. We should be, you can, I, I am all for writing good stories and you can, you can have a message in your story. Matter of fact, you should have a message in your mm -hmm. story. The big difference is you don't browbeat mm -hmm. that person, that, that, that message, you know, uh, you know, you can be upfront. I mean, there are some times, you know, you have to get through your message and stuff like that. Oh, and, well, definitely. Uh, and, but, you, you know, certain times, like like I've said it before, like one of the great writers that I really love, and I will buy his books at any time, is Matt Hawkins. And him and I, politically, <laughs> you religiously everything, are top, complete opposite points of the spectrum. But he's fantastic in terms of how he presents his ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, and to me, I like that. You know, of course, Neil brings up a really good point. He says he has no problem backing on Kickstarter and Yogo. And yep. I will I, I will back on both platforms, you know, there for a while. You know, I, I, I thought, C, it's, I still think CG is a great idea. It, it's the fact of I think we lost sight of what CG meant. Yes, you know, and and and, and I'm, what I mean by I'm not blaming everybody. It's kind of like uh, sorry about doing a blanket statement, but it's it's the whole. It, it came. It was no longer about doing good comics. It was, it was about. It, it became it, about it, the culture war, not about the content. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was about sticking whatever you can to that person, but yet at the same point, you look at people like Brian, uh, Brian Ball uh, from Rags. You look at Tim Lim from. You know, uh, uh, Trump Space Horse and whatever. Um, you look at um, Ben Dunn. You look at um, Sean Gordon Murphy, um, Brian Budella. These guys, they don't care about that stuff. They're just writing comics. They want to get their stuff out there. And, you know, and I, I and that's one big reason why I've been kind of backing out of the, you know, I, I, I've been letting a lot of that stuff get to me. That's one of the big reason why I've kind of not been doing streams a lot because I was getting too wrapped up in some of that stuff and allowing that stuff to rage me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and like I said, and that's part of the reason why, like, most right now, like, a good example to explain to people why you don't want to be... Like, the culture war is fun. Don't get me wrong. It is something that we can all enjoy uh -huh. and, like... Cause, Cause what oh, it, 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 it's, it's 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 like a sports it's, it's almost like a game if you will it's like sports it's like oh our team will win this time oh we lost but we'll get you next that's how it's become in a way. Well, you know, you have there are times you have to take a stand on certain things. It, it's true, one hundred percent. But, um, you know, I really like seeing the fact that people uh, are willing to say sometimes you know what. Um, yeah, the culture war is important, but at the same point, we need to be saying, hey, you know what? Let's, let's just create a good story. Let's write comics. Exactly. You know we, can, we can still tell those messages in good stories, good characters. You know, I, I mean, and, and that's the thing. So uh, I think in, in all honesty, you know, and this is what I really love about Josh's. I mean, Josh tells a great story. For, for those have, who haven't read uh, T. Bird of the Friday, he oh. tells a wonderful story. Oh, that's all I gotta say. Is, oh, yeah. it's so fucking good. Yeah. And, and and like the Bruce <laughs> Tim art, like like the Bruce Tim art. You think you kind of look at it and think, oh, okay, so what? It, it, it's kind of you know kid like, and then you really get into the themes and everything in the book. It, it's you know what yeah. I mean. And yeah. uh, Gorgonite says, I'm fine presenting a message within my writing, but aside from one exception, real life politics and, fish and fiction can fuck off as far as I'm concerned with whatever I'm making and consuming. Exactly. And that's, and that's the big, like, we should, that's one thing we should do, like, one of these, like, either meeting of the minds or, you know, attack of the live streamer. 
we should actually have a workshop all about removing the culture war from comics and making it once again about you know telling good stories and keeping because think about it dude it it's we i mean yes okay comic books when we were kids did teach us a lot of morals and things yeah. like that but at the same time it was you know here's this highly nuanced you know situation that we can't really give you a clear cut answer on i mean how many times for instance have you seen guns try to or yeah guns uh, comics try to tackle the gun issue right. and and every time they're like well it's nuanced i mean it, it depends on G who is yielding the gun and that that's a that's what we should do is like don't for, don't tell people what to think tell people how to think i think that's the big like thing that we need to return to when it comes to comics is yeah. you know that you know how to think not what to think well you know and, and like i said I, before you know i got a lot of my morals between two things the bible and comics, those presented a lot of my morals and how I view the world completely. You know, when I was a kid, you know, I and, and I've always said, you know, I grew up in a racist family and stuff like that. And I, when I got involved into reading X Men and you know, I got to Milton Hershey, I realized, hey, my world was bigger than this little amount. I couldn't be that way anymore. I had to change. It was because a, you know, I had this, you know, understanding in the Bible, and b. You know, I had this thing in X-Men showing me real, you know, granted it was it, it, these real consequences, even though it was all through comics, these real consequences, you know, what could happen if you had these racist ideas or these this, these prejudiced ideas and stuff like that. You know, now I know they are amped up into the stream, but X-Men presented that information very well, you know, um, and, and that's how you do it correctly. That's how you can use a political idea and show or a social idea and show. I mean, Chris Claremont, agree with me, Chris Claremont's X-Men run is probably still the best X-Men run. Him and Peter David, it, it, it is that whole, that whole 90s X-Men, you know, 91, the whole 90s uh, to the early 2000s X-Men run is well, still probably one of the best comic runs ever. Well, you got to figure. I mean, it's because the '80s built or the '90s built off of what Chris Claremont did in the '80s. I mean, yeah. And oh my God, it's funny you mentioned that because I'm like about to move the mic down because you know, the okay, I can mute my mic by moving the mic up. It, this headset is badass, but uh, the the I was about to be like, yeah, no, I I firmly agree. Chris Claremont is the quintessential X Men, and and you know it, it's one of those like. He, uh, the best way, Wizard put it best back in the day, is, is he was known for shooting the characters and the story so full of plot and things going on. Like, I remember the the little, uh, like, uh, it was a, not a comic strip, but it was like, you know how Wizard would have that, like, little uh, mm -hmm. drawing that would convey what the, the story was about? And it was, I think it was Cyclops and Storm. Like, Cyclops, Gene, and Storm, I do believe, standing next to each other, all looking at each other confused, with holes through them, and Chris Claremont there with a gun that says plot on it. And it's like, yeah, that that is Chris Cla That is what makes Chris Claremont to this day so well loved amongst the the uh comic book community because of the yeah. fact that he does and has been known for years to just shoot it so full of like interesting stories good plot new characters like i heard uh i watched what was it uh uh the the honest trailer uh making uh, for the uh, x-men the animated series in the 90s and the thing that like really kind of irritated the shit out of me was the fact that they were uh making fun of jubilee like come on jubilee's never going to happen it's like fuck you jubilee is still one of my favorite characters she is the epitome of a glass cannon because mm -hmm. no one like because all right there is a book 90s X-Men, like, uh, say, like, 98, 99, 2000 at the latest, all right? Mm -hmm. Back when Marvel was having the the Sentinels be made out of, basically, uh, homeless vagrants and homeless people and everything, yeah. and, and they were, like, literally, like, man-sized Sentinels that had 
all the power of the top one, you know, the, the giant ones, just they were human. And you see her use her ability to take to take out the eyes of the sentinel. And it's like, ha! And she's like, ha! And it's like, ah, I switch it to infrared. And it's like, come on, Jubilee. You could have easily, easily taken that down. You can drop a full-size sentinel with ease. Because all she has to do is have the, the her fireworks go because okay i think jubilee's biggest problem is she hasn't had a good enough writer and we got a humble yep. marty in chat yep. but uh she just hasn't had a good enough writer like no one's oh. really th thought about what she can do with her powers well, you know i i 100 agree with that it's like you, you know there are <laughs> i see like the same thing jubilee and starfire suffer from the same thing one in dc the other one in marvel <laughs> they both have the same problem. They suffer from horrible writers that yep. just don't get the characters. Yep. Like <laughs> Jubilee's whole thing is she is a former rich kid that was orphaned. Yep. Lived in a mall and then by pure happenstance fell in with the X-Men. Well, literally her first appearance is her accident like literally seeing the X-Men go through a portal and going, "Well, I'm going to follow those guys." And lived on the, their compound in Australia for like, I think it was like two, three months before they realized she was there. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, like, come on! That was such a well-written, like, way to start out a character in such a unique origin. How can this character be hard to write? Study a little bit of Japanese culture, because remember her parents were Japanese immigrants. Korean. Korean? I thought, I thought she was Japanese. Nope, she's Korean. Okay. Julie is uh, Korean, um, but uh, you know, yeah, I one hundred percent. You know, that's that's the problem. Well, yeah, because keep in mind, yeah, her parents were Korean. Then what happened was her parents died, and then she was adopted by two white uh, uh, parents. You know, until she left. Uh, so. but I mean, it's, the point yeah. still stands, though. I mean, and that is just one character that has always been shafted that you can yeah. easily bring back in. I mean, come on. You have, like, for instance, she's a good character that they can bring back in. And, like, really, I would love to, like, come on. Come on. She's, like, one of Wolverine's kids. Let's just be honest. The plethora yeah. that he has picked up. Yep. Through the years. Hey, but uh, I just saw here on Facebook just a really good announcement. Uh, Brad Ashworth just announced... Uh, Variant cover of issue twelve, punchline. Nice. Uh, yep. Oh, and you should see this this artwork that he did. Uh, let me send you this. Let, let me send this to you. Uh, Discord or uh, Twitter. Twitter. All right. I'll send it to you in Twitter. Um, I'm gonna cop that way. You can show it to everybody here because this thing is is. Unbelievable! Oh, you know, I bet. There, there's there. Yeah, there's another guy trying to stay out of the culture war, and you know, doing some good stuff over there. You know, I mean, you know, he we got the Sporkman cover for him to do the Indiegogo. We got, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, hopefully Brad's doing really good on his project. I haven't done a follow up on, on his, but you know. Oh yeah, and uh, humble Marty Wolverine, the found, uh, the fondling papa. Foundling? Yeah, you know, you, uh, the foundling papa. You know what's funny about him? You know, uh, I, I see him more the father figure than uh, and him being closer to Xavier's ideas than what uh, Scott Summers is. Because Scott, you know, which is funny about Scott is like he, I think he is further away from being how, what um... Yeah, but he's another character that suffered, if you ask me, from bad writers. Like, well, the, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's always been an asshole, yes. <laughs> like, you can have him be the asshole, but you can still have him be a good guy. There are people who are assholes who are good guys. Yeah. They're well, just yeah, an yeah, asshole. <laughs> the thing I never liked, and this is something I will say to this day, Scott Summers would never kill nope. Charles Xavier. No, one hundred percent. He would never kill him. And when they had him kill uh, uh, Xavier again, and then him turning bad, and you know, uh, trying to wipe out the Inhumans and stuff like that, I, I don't buy it 
at uh, all. That is out of character for him. Now, you, now the, what they could have done, which is what I would have done, is had the events of House of M. Mm-hmm. Like, that could have been very stressful for him, but it would have been, instead of it being, oh, well, he is, you know what I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. going the evil route. It could have been a great story about PTSD and how even, you know, and survivor's guilt and things like that. And, oh, my God, and have, and have Xavier trying to counsel him and have him accidentally kill Xavier in a fit of rage. Just... Because of how mad he is about how the loss of the, you know, how the mutant population is gone. There's only like a hundred, I think it's like a hundred and eighty something left. Mm -hmm. hundred and ninety mutants left after House of M and yeah. things like that. Like he could have just like, oh my God, they could have done so much with that story. And, and that's, and I guess that's part of the reason why it's like, why we are trying to, I guess you could say, it's why we're trying to do what we are within the indie space is we're trying to remind people, hey, just because those guys got screwed and those books got shafted, come over here. We got we got you, son. We got you. Check this out. Sporkman, go to Japan, volume one through three. You need it in your life, but only if you've gotten conventions yet. You can talk to that man over there. He's got you, son. You <laughs> hey, look you know, like... And here's the thing. To me, and Sporkman brings back that stuff that I love of the 80s and 70s and 80s early comics, you know, and maybe even just some of the early 90s before they start getting into the little, uh, little darker stuff, you know, yeah. uh, you know, for me, that, 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 you know, and that's what I'm thinking, like, you know, Josh, to me, Josh brings back the quintessential 90s hero, even though there was a lot of deconstruction in originally done and now he's mm -hmm. rebuilding this hero to me, like, to me, that is reminiscent of, you know, right after, you know, he came back, uh, you know, uh, from the Superman coming back from uh, the dead, and they're rebuilding him as a character and, and stuff like that. That's what I see, uh, you know, what they did, what Josh did with, um, you know, um, the with, uh, Throttle. Throttle. Yeah. So, you know, you have, you have these great comics that are coming out here, you know, from, from, you know, once again, I mean, you look. Have, have you have you seen the one post by Brian? Uh, how many like how many issues they've done in covers? Even though they've done like five <laughs> issues, they have done so many. <clears throat> so they've released so many issues out there. You know, in terms of like what's available for customers in different styles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and then you know, of course, we got. You know, Wand Pool coming soon. You know, uh, which and, which um, we all can't wait for. Let's just be honest; none of us can wait for it. I I read I got my Wall Might read issue two uh, of, of uh, you know Wall Might loved it. Uh, uh, you know, my hero uh, Magademia. I still you need know. to read the first one. I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, well, I, I I I know you'll be hooking me up with that copy when first chance you get. I am not worried about it. Yeah, I still have it over there on my... <laughs> yeah, I, we, we already talked about it. It's just one of those. You Things kind of got haywire. All of us kind of... We all took, decided to take a break from the twatter at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of had it back off a little bit, you know. I mean, I still... I, you know, I still... Get, but, you know, we got these... Com and you know, getting back to not, not trying to derail stuff and keep stuff in. This is why I'm so grateful for... Uh, you know, who we have here, you know, as this community. We got great supporters. You got Humble Bart, who's doing some great art. We got Neo, who's doing some great stuff over there, you know, with his character and supporting everybody else. Um, you know, coming up with his project ideas, Shinobi, what he's doing, supporting the community. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Mythoverse, you know, uh, I mean, right there. I mean, the Mythoverse alone. Well, I mean, we got, you know, the Wicked guys, right. not just Mythoverse. We got Wicked. We got. Uh, Canalis, you know, right? Uh, you know, Iron Sights two, boom! I didn't back, I didn't back the second Draw Breakers, but the moment Iron Sights two drops, boom! I'm dropping it. Oh yeah, you know, I, I definitely like Iron Sights better than uh, Draw Breakers. wasn't bad. There was just something about Iron Sights that I really just loved. I think it was because a lot of it was, it was. It struck like, me different. as it struck me as uh, closer to like a. Uh, Almost an old school western, yeah. If you will, set, yeah, yeah. It was, it was kind of, yeah. Uh, but it, 
Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was like you know. Uh, I you guess know, you could say like Dirty Harry mixed with Western. There, I think yeah. that that's what you're looking for. Yeah, uh, uh, like uh, the groundhouse movies and stuff like that. So yeah, so I had a great great time with that. You know, Graveyard Shift was good. I I, I enjoyed Nerd Wonders project a little bit more. Um, but Graveyard Shift wasn't bad. Um, you know, uh, and just going through the stuff that you know, uh, you know that I got, you know, um, keep uh, something real was excellent. Uh, you know, there from Joey Turnage. Uh, you know, uh, that was a great project. Um, of course, you know, like we said, Walmart. Um, I got in uh, Tittle Town, and um, from Alterna, I you know I backed I had backed that uh, Kickstarter. And then I also got in the Exilium collection. I backed that Kickstarter. Nice. Fantastic. Both, both fantastic series. Um, and you know, and, and that's just a mild drop in the bucket of what comics, you know, I back and, and have been enjoying. Because you know, that's the thing. It, you know, I, yes, DC and Marvel are pushing agendas. I, I think what we need to do is find something that you like within within comics. Don't. Don't just stop saying, I'm not going to buy comics anymore. You know, find something, because there are so much stuff out there for everybody. Just because what I like is not necessarily what you're going to like or the next person's going to like. Um, you know, uh, there's a probably a lot of comics from Image that I read. People are like, oh, Image. You know you know what? But I like the comics. They're good, they're good stories. Well, and, and, and that's the other, like, you've done a valid point, and like that is one thing we do have to stop doing. Like we, it goes back to that whole we need to stop letting the culture war control us. Stop. Mm -hmm. And and it really is it's like, look, if you like it, you like it. I may not, I personally may not be willing to plunk down my hard earned money on a lot of the the direct that comes out of the the you know the main the company. Yeah. 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 But does not mean that I like. For instance, T-Bird and Throttle, once again, because this is Josh Howard's night. Like, I don't care how many, like, he could keep putting out books. If I had the money to back him, I will back them. Because, ev like, every time yeah. I, I like, read his books, I'm like, I'm left with that whole, I want more. I'm not sitting there like, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not... Yeah. Not really sure, you know. No, I'm like, oh man, why, why do you always gotta leave on such great cliffhangers, Josh? <laughs> you know, I found that same way when I was reading Dead at Seventeen, and uh, he was releasing them all. I'm like, oh, 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 come on, dude, you're killing me here, you're killing me here. It's like he has got great writing. He is, he he is a a good, uh, a good writer, good artist. I mean, everything that he has is, is just fantastic and and I, honestly if anybody can i'm telling you when he comes out with his next crowdfunding please back it 100 percent t-bird i would love to see a t-bird and sporkman team up that would be fantastic i would right. love to see sporkman in the hands of josh i mean i i would love it um i would love to see like yeah neo just said psycho ko uh i would love to see a nice good team up with psycho ko and sporkman um, you know, the same thing, you know, we have, uh, uh, we got something coming down the road here, uh, with, uh, something with, uh, Jeremy Lott with Sporkman. Um, and, uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be announcing that soon. Um, here, uh, you know, Jeremy's going to be announcing that. I, I'm telling you, you guys are going to be, you guys are going to be blown away. And nice. you're going to be like, you're going to be like, oh, snap. Oh shit! But you see, know, uh, and that's but that's the thing. Like the fact it, you were, the whole point is we're trying to return that excitement into comic books. Like yeah, you know, getting people excited to want to read these books again and excited to want to like you know like the old Stan Lee quote. You know, boobs are great, but it's, you know, on the screen and all, but you still want to hold them in your hand. And that's what we want. We want people holding these books all up in their hands, all fondling the books, all dirty like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Oh dear God. I'm just looking at the, his uh, his uh, cover, 
and his Toronto cover there of uh, Book Zero, uh, She Hawk Tribute. Yep. Oh snap! That is beautiful. I know, dude. <laughs> dude, I was I. The more I think about it, like I was just going to get the standard cover, but I'm really thinking about go just go ahead and plunk in the extra five down for the alternate covers, and and like. Like I asked him early on in the stream, if you are unable to back the book, you know, right now, don't worry. He will be having it in demand for a little bit, but don't let that give you an excuse to let this book pass you by because you will be disappointed in yourself if you do not back this one. Like, well, so that means I have, I'm going to be backing at. Twenty dollars and also forty five because I've got because I want the alt covers mm. and then I'm going to take the original ones that I have and I'm going to give them uh, to my boss because I've been getting him because I really oh, want that uh, I really want that she hawk cover ah uh, Toronto is dude uh, oh dude like we all want the these covers because of the fact that it's like it it goes back to the whole uh, what. Well, the best way I can put it is what we always enjoyed about comics is, like, all right, you know, uh, for instance, to quote your boy Zach, all right? Yeah. He was like, you you folks wonder why I have six kids, and he showed this, like, highly, highly suggestive panel from an old 80s, 90s comic, and it's like, yep, that ain't no lie. We, we, we. We, you know, and that was, you know, young teenager. That that is kind of part of the selling point and whatnot. You know what I mean? But yeah. but at the same time, it's not like that was the entirety of it. it. It was a complete package. Yes, we got our fan service, but we also got fantastic stories, great art, good action, relatable characters. I mean, come on. That that <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Uh, yeah, Neil, awesome, great. You know, uh, and that's the thing is, you know, uh, you know, you really want, and, and this is what I love about, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, honestly, he he does a fantastic job with that She Hawk uh, uh, parody cover. No, um, no yeah. lie, no lie, no. he does. Like it, yeah. it's one of those the 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 old uh, Scooby Doo meme where they're all looking on the ground and whatnot. The whole squad's looking, still can't find the lie. <laughs> yeah, that's when you're bringing thick women back again. Yeah. <laughs> oh thick, man. Thick, thick, thick women. Gotta love it. You know, um, that's you, you know, what one of the things is that that's wonderful about uh, this kind of this renaissance in comics again. You know, I was reading a really good post somebody put on the other day about, and my sister and I disagree. I. Like about you know reading and stuff like that. Like she doesn't care for comics, you know, and you know, and I and I said to her, I said, oh, why don't you care for comics? And she feels that you know, uh, it does take away from, you know, uh, imagination and stuff like that. And I said, well, you know, I, I can see that, but at the same point, I disagree because you know, um, really, I mean, it's a different type of medium. I think it helps with imagination. You know, um, in some ways, because you get to see what the artist does look like. But then, as if you're a person who's an art person, it helps you, in my opinion, it helps you kind of see how art can be done and, and it, it provides training and stuff like that. So I'm a little bit different. But anyhow. Well, uh, and, and, you, and, I, and I agree with you. I completely agree with you. It, and, and the reason why is because of the fact that, yes, all right, it may not be your traditional style of like literature. But, Big Butt, all right? We're talking the biggest of them all. We're talking like I like Big Butts and I cannot lie level Big Butts, okay? <laughs> it is also one of the greatest things about comics is the fact that it's such a unique medium yeah. for telling stories. Because there's certain things that you can do in a comic book that you just can't get away with in a standard book or even a movie. And at the same time, there's things that you can get away with in a book and in a movie. I mean, each medium has their own, you know, uh, drawbacks and their own, you know, uh, pros, cons, whatever, however you want to put it. Like, and so you really can't, in if you ask me, in good faith, compare the two because it's, it it really is like trying to compare apples and oranges. Yeah. 
True, true. True. Hey. You know, I, I have to say, you know, that's one of the big reasons why, like, I'm kind of getting out of, like, a lot of the stuff on Twitter is because <laughs> uh, Neo says, thick Amazon beauties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, that's another reason why I love Regina. Regina is a, a fantastic character. Um, you know, I love seeing, you know, this, the, I, I love seeing strong women. You know, I love seeing these characters that can go rock bottom and they come up and they rise up to be these wonderful heroes. You and, know? and, and to further that, you know, without the, the blatant pandering, that has been riddling these strong, what were formerly strong female characters beforehand. Yeah. Like, and that, that is a very valid point that has to be said, because that's what these individuals, like, those currently writing these characters don't understand. Is it, It's not that we have a problem with female characters. We have a problem with the pandering. We have the problem with the you taking, like, uh, oh, uh, the Rick guy on uh, uh, Twitter that has the Venom symbiote uh, as the uh, what you call it as his uh, profile pic. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the dude, the dude that's swole and like, I, I I wouldn't mind living near him because then I'd give him full permission to kick me in the ass and get me to the gym. But uh, <laughs> oh, you think I'm playing? I really would too. I really would. But uh, the the <laughs> big butts for life. Spanish Gwen Stacy Thick, that is hilarious. You would that's from the other night. I'll fill you in here in a sec. But uh, he was uh, posting a, I think it was him anyway that showed a panel from the latest Wonder Woman where she got shot and she's bleeding and everything, and it was a male cop that shot her, and whatnot. And it's like so they depowered her because she's bulletproof, and they pretty much it, was, it turned into. Uh, culture war deal, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, needlessly. And it's like, that's what we're trying to get away from. We don't want that. We wanted to... Wonder Woman was badass, and she was just showing up, kicking ass, and it didn't matter. Like, we didn't care if she was a woman. We just cared that she was a good character. And that's what we want to see the return of. And that's what we're in this indie circle doing. Because take, for instance, Throttle. What's well, Throttle? Okay, former superhero... Well, former MMA fighter, former superhero... And current police officer. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's, you know, pretty strong character. And she just so happens to be a female. So, I mean, just goes to show even more. You, it makes, you want this book in your life. You want this book in your life. Just yeah. say. Yep, yeah, 100%. Look, and I will say that to any of John. Josh's stuff. What, what's awesome is he's got 13 days left, and he's over almost 70 percent of his goal. I, so, I hope I hope he can get it completed. Yeah, dude. like he uh, should. He should. Yeah, he should. Um, and I think with his with his name, that's the thing is, you know, I kind of wish he would. You know, I know why he's doing it on Indiegogo. Uh, there, I was talking with uh, um, Ed Beans. He, I, he emailed me. I don't know if you remember me back in the project called Nina and Ariel. Um, um, it, was, it was his first. It was his first uh, like uh, release to like uh, American. Like it's his own story where he's not doing other. Uh, he's writing for somebody else. It's his own creator, own project. Gotcha. So, he had emailed me, uh, you know, just to follow up and tell me what was going on. Like he wanted to find out, like how how everything was, because he's from Brazil. So, uh, you know, him doing him releasing the stuff, you know, he was going through Kickstarter. He had to use a third person. I said, well, I didn't have any problems. I got my stuff in great uh, great shape. I said, you know, uh, you know, I would definitely back him again. He's like, well, I'm I'm actually going to Indiegogo because of. There, I guess there's something going on there where they're going to be changing some things and it's easier for them. Yeah. So, so but anyhow, you know, and, and, and in all honesty, I mean, what, we are in a great time, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I think we are, uh, you know, uh, we got great comics that are here. Uh, Very great. Hold on, let me see here. What? 
it, it just kind of makes me miss hangouts because then if we had hangouts i could just be like let you you know show things off and things like that i will admit that is one thing i do miss about hanging out and uh uh, Sparkman Studios. He, all right, here, here you go. Contact. Okay, I hopefully you caught that. And yeah, the, yeah. they forgot the part of being strong of actually overcoming great struggle. Even Superman had to figure out how to overcome many threats that he couldn't simply power through. Exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that uh, real quick. So the Gwen Stacy thick thing. Uh, Spanish Gwen Stacy thick. Basically, we were talking about how uh, Marvel did Gwen Stacy dirty, and uh, I think it. Neostar Gorgonite, one of the two, I can't remember, sorry guys, went and mentioned uh, and showed how the, well, quite frankly, all I gotta say is Spanish Gwen Stacy, dat ass. Dat so her, ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at her, holy crap, so they, like, they actually changed her butt versus the American version? I'm guessing, I'm not sure, I, I, all I know is that was, that that's pretty, <sighs> holy I, I mean, I'm looking at it here, and it's like, dear God, that's thick. Mm-hmm. That is thick. That is like, kind of. I guess you can kind of put it as a you. You could use it as a shelf. It's so thick. It's like click. Oh, yeah, good. That just just don't move. Don't move. That'll that'll that you works could, perfect. You could put. You could actually put a drink on that. That's how <laughs> yes, exactly. And you and. Know that, you know that uh, the trade they have where the girls are, are, are putting the, the drinks in their boobs and stuff mm. like that? You can do that with Gwen Stacy's butt. The right. <laughs> like, oh. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's criminal that you aren't able to show off Spanish Gwen Stacy's wonderful ass on stream. Yep. It's not that we couldn't. It's just that, uh, let, let's be honest. YouTube would probably be like, that's over-sexualization. Dude, it's gotten to the point, like, alright, the last, like, three, four streams I've had have all gotten, uh, uh, basically, uh, the email saying, oh, well, this, you were yes. having, you were having content, oh, no, uh, basically saying, uh, someone had a copyright claim for, vi yeah, for video games. Like Square Enix with Final Fantasy XIII, uh, someone else with Halo, things like that. And it's like, what? I'm just trying to play some oh. video. I I know. It's like you you do realize you're shooting the YouTube. You're shooting yourself in the foot here. <laughs> you, you're kind of being dumb. Okay, YouTube. Oh. Oh. oh I I almost missed that. I don't. Uh, one thing I, I don't know if you're uh, watching the stream, but one thing I've always liked about the Elder Scrolls game, especially Oblivion, mm -hmm. I just got a uh, one of the uh, let's see what is it? It uh, Wakelid stones off of a high thing, off a high perch, but shooting it with my arrow. Shooting it with a bow and arrow. Oh, you're you're too high up. Not anymore. <laughs> But, uh, nah, dude. Like, uh, that to me, though, I think, and that's why I said it's like, uh, you know, we, we, we let, I, I guess you could say, uh, certain factions that have come within the space, you know, the comic book realm of YouTube, if you will, we, we kind of, uh, uh okay, we, we kind of brought that on ourselves, I'm kind of feeling by just being so negative, so I'm like really trying to keep this a positive space, so mm -hmm. only positive people can stand to be around us. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Neo says that's one thing that Gwen has over Mary Jane. <laughs> Is that 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 thick that, that thick ass? <laughs> the thickness. The thickness. You know what? I, 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 yeah, there is actually both Gwen and uh, Mary Jane. Like, I like both characters. You know, it's a shame that they killed, uh, you know, Gwen off because I actually really like her as a character. I don't know. It's not the, it's not the problem to, for me that they killed Gwen off that bothers me. What bothers me about Gwen is they killed her off. Then years later, they wrote this entire story where she was cheating on. Uh, Peter, Peter w with... Well, she was raped. Yeah, she claims that she was raped by uh, Norman. And then had 
the you know his kids and this that, and the other and it's like that, that, that was Jay Michael Strinsky's run, and which was yeah. And, and I, I'm sorry, but it's like well, and like that you've pissed off everyone who's been a fan since like they were kids, yeah. and who knows who Gwen Stacy is. I actually have somewhere. Uh, I think that exact issue, actually, like the, mm. not the one where she died, but the the one where uh, Green Lantern dies because of that issue after, where Spider-Man, uh, Green Lantern accidentally kills himself. And, you know, that is one thing I did give the uh, Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man with uh, Tobey Maguire, is that they did do that scene kind of right, where Spider-Man was about to fucking... Take him in, because he wasn't going to kill him even though he wanted to. Yeah. And and then Norman killed himself. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just goes to show you that, that there, 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 even back in the, the early 2000s, there were still some shitty comics being made. You know, that... that you know, and, and that's the thing is, you're going to have runs that were, I mean, we, we shall not name the bad runs in the 60s. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, the mm -hmm. 50s and 60s of comics were not the greatest, in my opinion. Nope. Well, well you also got to take into account, it was, like, they had superhero comics, but they didn't really know what to do with the medium. And that's what the issue was. They didn't really know what to do with the medium. And... Well, you know, it, you also had the problem with the comics code. That was another issue. Which I stand by. We need to see a return of, and I like, and I will, and it. Uh, I I don't I don't know if I want to see a return of it. I. I it's uh, it's one of those, the best way I can put it, the comics code authority, the way it was. Like, granted, you you know, update it for modern times. There are certain things that are acceptable that wouldn't be acceptable back in the day, but. You know, within reason, like one of the things, like a lot of the storylines dealing with sexuality and things of the such wouldn't have flown under the Comics Code Authority. And I kind of agree with that. I think that would be like, it would make it to where comic books are at least meant to. We're not, if your kids read comic books, they're not going to come to you after reading a comic book and making, you know, giving you a bunch of uncomfortable questions that you don't know how to answer yet because yeah. you weren't ready for these talks and that that's what i want to see the return of with you know with comics is that you know return to certain i guess you could say some semblance of a standard i'm not saying it had we have to have it exactly the way it was but a, a standard a way of be a way of i guess you say uh, a Get a, a guideline that prevents people from going too crazy. A good writer well, can work within constraints. Yeah. Uh, well, I think where the other thing too is where I think where it is needed is like if you're going to be putting stuff in, say schools, you know, uh, or you're going to be putting stuff in, uh, you know, like Walmart or or stuff like that where kids are. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then, like, if you're going to the comic book shop, that's where, you know, in my opinion. So. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of getting caught back up in chat real quick. Uh, let's see. I thought Walmart, or I thought Marvel didn't want women with pinup butts. Right. Uh, <laughs> you bet I'm going to use that as a reference on Xanathos. Nice. Speaking of questionable decisions made for Spider-Man's girls, remember that one time Black Cat got raped for no reason? Yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yep. Osborne took that glider blade to the bladder. <laughs> what a way to go. Alright, sorry, sorry, sorry. I guess I, I've That's been okay. trying to get better at uh, keeping up with chat. <laughs> but uh yeah no i mean but the, i that's why i keep saying you know saying the return of it could be what really saves comics as well or uh, another aspect of what could save comics because i think for instance like you or josh howard or you know a lot of people who are in that fill this indie space could write stories very easily that would you know, be approved by the CCA 
and yeah. it wouldn't be an issue. I mean, I know there are people like, uh, for instance, take Jim Helis, who was like, well, who is very much against it because he's like, well, that would affect his book. And it's like, well, his book, and this is my point to, you know, to people who say that the, you know, because their book has mature themes and, you know, whatnot, that's your, quite frankly, your, your book is aimed at an older audience anyway and wouldn't get approved by the authority anyway. So I don't see how that how that's an yeah. issue. And there was always, before even the comics code, there was still always, like, books that, I mean, look at, look at Vampedia and stuff like that, you know, Vampirella. There was still Harris Comics around, you know, mm -hmm. during that time frame. Uh, EC still was releasing, you know, their books and stuff like that. They just weren't releasing them into areas where kids could actively get to them. You know, they were, uh, they were in comic book shops, or you could only get them at conventions. Or you know, now that we have online, you know, I, I'm all for like areas like if you want to do a comics code, that's fine. Like if it's going to be available, like for kids, like and you want it to go into say Walmart, uh, back into wherever, you know, Target or you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then you would have it there, and then when you do, let's say you wanted to do, like what DC's doing, their black label version. Okay, well then that's the one that can only be special ordered through, you know, Diamond or through wherever, you know, D DC directly or however they want to do it. Yeah, you or know. picked up at a, you know, a comic shop or things like that. Right. So, I mean, you can do those things. And, and But I think what, the one good thing that the Comics Code did do is, and I, and I will definitely, um, I agree that one of the great things about the Comics Code is it did uh, force people to stay within constraints of what, what, what could and couldn't be allowed. Now, do I think we have to have something as strict as what the Comics Code originally was? No. I think we need something a little bit more laxed, but still... You know, you have to have a, a rating on comics, just like you do with uh, with anything else, in my opinion. Well, for me, it's I think by having those constraints, it will, like I said, it'll help. I guess you could say, uh, oh, how does the expression go? Uh, the rem separate the wheat from the chaff, I think, is the, the way the expression goes. Well, it would it would definitely take out a lot of the people uh, in uh, <coughs> in comics now with what they're writing. Yeah, it, it, and I think and that's what I I think that by getting rid of all the people who let's be honest, they I'm not saying they shouldn't be writing comics. It's they should be writing comics that are predominantly meant for kids and you know young adults. You know what I mean, teenagers, things like that. Because, let's be honest, 13, 14, 15, you, you got enough going on at that age. You don't really need a comic book coming along that you're trying to read, even at that age, for escapism and whatnot. Being like, well, you know, you're bad just for being X. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, yeah. And, and, or pushing like ideologies that you know what if you're highly christian i mean things like that or you're you know raised in a christian household and now you you know your parents haven't talked to you about a lot of these things i mean and now this comic book that they did that they were buying you every you know that you were constantly wanting all of a sudden introducing you to these you know these things that they have done well to keep you sheltered from well that's going to if if you will make it to where they're not going to buy you that comic anymore because they're they're worried what it's teaching you and uh i think uh neil stuff does his best constraint can breed creativity something like that yeah well yeah you if you have limits on everything it will 100 percent. i do agree with that um you know that's one of the great things about hollywood when they had a constraints and stuff like that you know, we were living in a time where, more, uh, you know, great movies were coming out. Well, now, you, you know, they could do anything they want to. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> you know. Up uh, to and including literal, like, triple X scenes, if you will. 
Well, now, yeah, now they can, uh, the, uh, the FCC just ruled, or the FTC, one of the two just ruled, like, that they're not going to fine uh, anybody who has nudity in their shows on cable television, and if they swear. That so, so why do you have why do you have a rating system at at this point? Yeah, it, it, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I I would like to see things like let's take for instance uh, let's use sex. I'd like to see that become. I guess you could say that. I told a buddy of mine, I was like, I'd like it for sex to be viewed as just a natural function, not something glorified or anything of the such. But that this is not, this is just going to make get make things worse because now people mm -hmm. will be like, I guess, how does that line go? Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Should yeah, one hundred percent agree with that. And it's like I'm kind of scared because. I like you know South Park. They'll make a joke about it, and it'll be the hilarious, most hilarious episode ever. But they'll be like, "Wait, we can make all the oh, did we just shoot our what all in one episode? <laughs> Damn it!" Yeah, yeah, talking about South Park. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they're, they're they're just as guilty, you know. As much as I love South Park, they're 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 just as guilty. So. Oh yeah, they well, are. It, it is. Uh, uh, 9.49, so I, unfortunately, I gotta get to bed, cause, uh, I need to get sleep, cause I'm trying to, I go back to work on Monday, so they want me to try to make sure I'm getting rest and stuff like that. So. Oh, not a problem. Uh, so. it, it's one of those, if nothing else, uh, I guess, uh, oh shit, I guess I could always just call the stream there. That's what? up to you, man, I don't want to, I don't want you to, you know, kill it. Uh, phony baloney Zoe dumpster fire Ben Quinn would be first on the chopping block. Yeah, uh, yeah. Her, uh, there would be a, <clears throat> a couple other ones. You know, uh, uh, I'm not going to say the one who put out uh, what was it, pervert? <laughs> <laughs> he blocked uh, me, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So you know. Yeah, there there would be a, there would be a lot of people uh, off the chopping block and stuff like that. So. Uh huh. All right. Well, I guess I'll so, let you take this as a quick moment to tell people where they can find you at Chuck. Sure. And uh, as always, you guys can find me at uh, everything that would be Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube's. Uh, at Sporkman Studios. Uh, just keep an eye out, guys. We'll be announcing some stuff here. Uh, I did put a post up the other day. Well, Eric, technically, Eric put a post up the other day. Uh, he's in the process of making the action figures, so those who backed at that level, uh, they we are working on those figures right now. Uh, we're also waiting on um, uh, to co coming back from the, um, the, the t-shirts and stuff like that. And the printer? Stuff. The printer, yeah, because they screwed that up. I haven't heard back from Eric on that. Uh, but, yeah, so hopefully, you know, here uh, we should be able to kick in the gear uh, with um, Sporkman again here once we once Ginger is finished with the, the Mythoverse guys. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, we'll be able to get stuff out quicker than what we were. Um, you know, so we are a little behind the downside, so... And, you know, and I know I preached about getting stuff out on time, and which is one of the big reasons why, you know, letting people know that, hey, um, you know, we are working on it. It's, it's, um, and letting people know that, you know, we are, we are, what's going on. Yeah. Know, so. No, not that a problem. Way, yeah. Unlike, unlike other people, you know, who are like, um, here we are now, we are September. Mm. They are a year and uh, almost six months late. As I take a sip of coffee, because, you know, I, I, I like that was just worked out because I was about to get a drink of coffee anyway. And you're like, you're in six months late, sip of coffee. That's <laughs> so, none of my business. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But anyhow, 
so that's 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 where that's where we're at you know uh so thank you guys for letting me come on i appreciate it i I was shame i missed josh but you know hey i wanted to you know talk josh at least you know shield his project one more time spork man forever yes t-berg and throttle forever you know uh (laughs) so if you guys can uh josh has got some other stuff out there uh besides t-berg and throttle he does have uh if you like um uh, he has a project called Get It 17 that is kind of taking some of uh, the Armageddon religious aspect and throwing in zombies and, and you know, death of rebirth and stuff like that. And he also has another project called Black Harvest, uh, which was uh, a great se- uh, short six issues. Um, so uh, do we have a link for his website by any chance? Uh, not right off the bat, but I can get it real quick. That is okay. no problem. Because like, I really want, yeah, what really want people to. Uh, he also does art pieces and stuff like that. So you know, really, really support Josh. This is this is his. Uh, this is the only way he makes money. So uh, I, I really want people to support him. He is a fantastic person. He's uh, a fantastic uh, artist, and uh, I, I'm glad to know him. Uh, he is one of my favorite comic. You know, we've talked about this before. You know, uh, that he's one of my favorite comic writers and creators, you know. Uh, yep, and, you know, the he's also really down to earth. I mean, come on, he, he's willing to come on, you know, even small channels like, you know, mine and yours and whatnot to push his book because he understands yeah. the, the concept. Like him and Brad R. Smith, for instance, both, who also understand this, ain't, there isn't no, a thing as a channel too small. There isn't a thing as a channel too big. It's just a matter of whether or not it's a place for you to shill your, you know, your works and to try yeah. to get get your what you're working on out there. Yeah, 100%. You know, and uh, so, uh, I mean... It, it, it's and then we'll, we do that same thing with any anybody who wants to get on. Uh, matter of fact, the only other thing I can recommend, guys, uh, JDA released uh, volume three of Flying Sparks. Um, ho- hold on. Uh, Neo said, Hey, Sparkman, how does Henshin Hero Riserman sound? Sounds pretty cool. That I is, like it. That is his book that he's been, uh, working on for a while now and i he, he's been in chat talking about it because i've been doing a daily stream to whatnot okay it, it's one of those i guess the best way to put it is to try to help grow my channel i've been working on every day whether it's after work or you know my days off uh just me chilling i've been uh, I do a gaming stream, talk about general, like, you know, comic books, video games, general things, and geek them that, uh, and trying to keep the, I guess you could say, uh, the the good vibes going, the the, the positivity going. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I want to start doing that, too. I need to, uh, I'd actually want, want to, uh, I, want, I want to do some reviews of manga and stuff like that. So I want to, yeah, I, I really definitely want to, uh, start doing that some more, you know, once I get through this, this, uh, this time here with doing Sporkman and, you know, school, I, I really want to start doing that more, you know, uh, get back into trying to grow the channel and, you know, do our more reviews. Cause we want to, I want to keep things positive. I want to bring on creators who are, you know, uh, who, who are out there that support great comics, you know, mm-hmm. And it's definitely it's it's like I said it, it's like we were talking about earlier you know trying to return this to a space of positive feedback about yep. the comics you know get away from the culture war get away from the conflict look we're and the best way I can put it is we're not the quartering we're we're not you know geeks and gamers we're not all you know the the you know clownfish TV we're not predominantly culture work channel and i like i let myself fall into that i mean granted i like talking like i do like to do news and politics and things of the such and i'm eventually going to get back to doing that but right now i'm trying to focus more on growing the channel by avoiding the culture war, avoiding the politics yeah. and actually like talk about things because everybody needs a break everybody needs a break you need a break gorgonite yep. neostar Humble Marty, all y'all, everybody, 
we all need a break from the constant culture war and the constant just like this is this is our quote unquote safe space. You know yes, what I mean? And, and one hundred percent. You know that's that's the thing is you know everybody needs uh you you go stir crazy. So uh so yeah so I mean everybody goes stir crazy if you if you let uh if you let those things drive you it's going to only stress you out even more. So I like what you're doing. I like this idea. I want to keep it positive. Um, you know, I, I, it's a shame that we kind of got to this point. We let this, we let certain people drive the community into what it did. This is why we need to take the reins back and let's just let's keep things going. Right. You know, because I want I want people like Cody to be successful. Yep. Josh, I, I I want I want people to come know that they're going to come to our our. Uh, you know, to our channels or to, you know, they're going to come and meet new creators or existing creators and they're going to say, you know what? Hey, Chuck had, Chuck had this person on. Uh, hey, you know, Josh had this person on their channel. Let me get on that channel. You know, maybe that, they got some support of people that are willing to back their projects. Yep. And I think that's what we need to do. They keep positivity and stuff like that. So. Exactly. It, 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 it's it's steer away from the drama, steer away from all the things like that we were trying to get away from. I guess you could say, right? We are writing the ship. That is what we are doing. We yeah. are we we are writing the <clears throat> ship and getting everything back to what it needs to be. Just you know, like I said, I mean, it's about being positive, about enjoying what we have. And instead of dwelling on what we lost, let's, let's focus on what we can create. Let's focus on what we still do still have. I mean, yeah. I, like a prime example, I mean, the got me, uh, if, I don't know if you were watching the stream or not, but a new, new addition to, for instance, uh, the background. Also, I completely changed the background. I like moved my desk around and everything. But, uh, uh, new flash watch that my mom got me when she was up in Pennsylvania. I would actually wear it, but it's just too heavy and it feels awkward and cumbersome. Hmm. But it, it's pretty pretty cool. I mean, uh, let me set that there. Like, yeah. it, it... Let's see. Uh, pull open to reveal the watch and everything. But uh, uh, the front of it, which is really cool. Spinner. Okay. You know, you know, and that's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that's the, uh, the other thing too is, yeah, you know, Mar Humble Marty brought a good thing. She's talking about her going right, reading uh, Rise of the Shield Hero web novel, which, by the way, excellent, excellent light novel. Um, I've been getting into the, a, lot, the, a lot of the Japanese web novel or web novels and uh, also the light novels. And uh, so, uh, it's been a lot of good stuff, you know, and, and that's what we need. We need this good stuff. You know, we need we need to talk about stuff like you, you having the Flash Watch and you having uh, these great things that, you know, we love. And that's what we need to do. Let's let's be uh, different from everybody else. Let's promote positivity. Let's promote good projects that you like. I don't even care if somebody wants to come on and we want to do a night because I still would love to do a, a rank a Marvel movie night. We, where we, we go through we rank our, the Marvel movies. We could still, still do that. We could definitely still do that. I, I really want to. I, I think we really want to do that. And I would like to get like that hasn't been on our channel. That way we can get some new voices and stuff like that. You know. So uh, if anybody wants to do join us, you know, I think we should do it. I really want to get Eric to do it too. But what we want to do is what what we'll do is we, if we we'll talk about it. You know, off air sometime. We'll. we'll something up but what we should do is come up with <clears throat> where we rank our marvel movies and then we come on stream and we'll talk we'll, we'll talk uh, you know where we'll take movie by movie and we'll say i don't care if it's a three hour stream or whatever we'll take it we'll say okay well where we're gonna the first one iron man where do you put it this is why i put it here you know i want i want to do that i really really want to do that I, and, and, and I I don't blame you because that sounds like it'd be a lot of fun i think it and it and it goes back to like i said we're Changing focus, writing the, writing the ship of getting it back to things we enjoy and 
like we i guess you could say uh over the past year year and a half we've gotten so focused on what we hate we've forgotten yeah. what we enjoy and that's yeah. and, and and that's where we're trying to get back to is you know what we enjoy what we like doing how we like doing it <laughs> uh, well um, yeah Gorgonai says my marvel movie rank iron man number one the rest <laughs> right yeah, you know what uh, it, I, i'm right there with you man because iron man one for me was just uh, and i will reveal that to, to you that's gonna be the first thing um I, I literally for me civil war and iron man one are literally neck to neck each other in my opinion Ew, civil war <laughs> but we'll we'll talk about that. I would like to do also, uh, you know, an anime, uh, uh, you know, an anime uh, ranking, you know, or let's let's uh, do a night of anime because my whole thing is I want to talk more than just comics because manga is comics, anime is, is all tied into the whole medium. Oh I, yeah, I don't know how, you, and, you know, I don't know how much, how much anime you've watched and stuff like that. Well, and and that's kind of like uh, one of the things that I was actually pointing out that's like we're not i'm trying to make this a if you will uh like if one of the things i added don't know if you noticed was uh the ocarina of time the legend of Zelda ocarina of time the you know in the background for the 64 you know try adding more gaming more like other mm -hmm. realms of geekdom into it because let's be honest we're into all of it like yeah it, it it's it, to sit there and say oh well we're only in the comic books when half the time we're talking about video games you know star trek star wars or you know the the various you know uh if you will uh yeah. forms of geekdom the out there yeah. the uh, yes <laughs> and, it, and it's it's one of those i want to have a i want this to kind of be like you know a celebration of all things geekdom, not a constant complaining about all things that have been destroyed in them geekdom. Yeah. No, no more no, of that. Yeah. There, there, there is so much out there. You know, I, you know, and, and I know some people are PC gamers. Other people are, you know, uh, console gamers and they're sub versus dub and all these different things. I don't care. I want you watching the medium. That's what I want you to do. I want people to enjoy the medium. Stop getting involved in these whole things. Like I let, like I let stuff like, uh, you know, the whole Jedi, uh, the Last Jedi, the Last Jedi debacle disappoint me. Yes, I didn't care for it. You know what? But Han Solo and you know, uh, Rogue One. You, you know, there can be positives and negatives. No, actually, I did enjoy Ant Man. Yep. Uh, by the way, Neo Star. Yep. Uh, me too. Me too. Uh, second one wasn't as good as the first one, nowhere near. I thought the second one was kind of meh. I thought yeah. it, it, it's still better, in my opinion, than like Civil War or like, you know, obviously Captain Marvel or things like that. But I like the first Ant Man, though. Like, this is how I got people to see the first Ant Man. I was like, CT, you're looking at it as a superhero movie. It's not a superhero movie, it's a mm -hmm. heist movie that yeah. happens to have superheroes in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. It's the same thing with uh, Winter. Uh, if you look at Winter Soldier, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. It's it a spy was... movie that just so happens to have superheroes in superheroes. it. Superheroes. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent. And those weren't good movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Gorgonite. Yeah, and, and that's one of the great things that Gorgonite has a disagreement with us, and that's great. I like that. You know that you didn't like them, and I want to know mm -hmm. why you didn't like them. That's what we're. That's the whole reason why I want to do a ranking Marvel movie night. So we can see, I want to see other people why they didn't care for them. And that's that's what I think is great about our community. You have people that don't care for stuff that you like. You know, I, I get that people don't like anime. That's fine. I understand. Okay. You know, that's fine. But why don't you like it? Okay, my sister makes a good point. She doesn't like it because she doesn't care for the voices. And she doesn't care for the animation. Those are all great points. I may disagree with her. Oh yeah. It, yeah. But at the same but time. I, I think, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing is I want I want us to get into different stuff because my whole channel was about Sporkman especially. You know, we were we were we we're gonna do manga anime. Um, you know, I really would love to get uh I would love to be able to get some voice actors on. Um, you know, well uh, you I'm should you should hear my streams because I've been working a lot on uh, doing different voices and whatnot again, and it's been uh, 
it, it it's like like, <laughs> like because you know it, it's for instance like yes Batman I see you decided to join me in conflict do not worry I will defeat you as I always do but first <laughs> Batman what shall you do about A and then B yes Batman that's mm-hmm. right. There's nothing yeah. you can do, and it's <laughs> and, and it's like but doing like Bane and doing like the the stupid <laughs> just stupid like uh I was trying the other day when I was playing because I got the the PlayStation Classic and oh hey hey thirty uh, twenty nine actually bucks on Amazon right now. It, it was definitely definitely worth the purchase. But uh, no, it, what made it funny though for me is, is uh, I was doing that and uh, we're playing all of and like, <clears throat> let's see if I can still listen. Oh, look, it's Perry the Platypus. Hello, Perry the Platypus. Don't worry, I have my nice little trap for you. But I first, while I'm keeping you on the trap, I'm going to show you my new Anita. And I think you will enjoy it. It, it, it takes all the trash in the world and turns it into slime. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's not really, you know, bad. It's kind of good because the, the, the slime is kind of like biodegradable. It's good for the environment. But it's more of an inconvenience for everyone else. I, I think I do a fairly good doof and schmertz. Oh, awesome. but uh, so like it's that's what I'm saying. It's funny you mentioned you know like people voicing the Sporkman comic when I've been 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 trying to get back into doing voices again myself. Just uh, just just make the streams a bit more entertaining, pure yeah. and simple. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So well, guys. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we went over it a little bit there. <laughs> so. Oh, not a problem. Like, so I guess real quick before we head out, give a quick. Uh, uh, finish up with the chat real quick. Uh, the second one did have Lawrence Fishburne as Black Goliath. Very true. Very true. Uh, talking about Star Wars stuff. I couldn't be bothered to watch Ant-Man. Uh, you missing out. Didn't care for Captain Marvel because it reminded me of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay. Uh, Gorgon I, uh, Bane Cat. Nolan's Bane. Yeah. Uh, I have a few voices to contribute from Neostar. I can do Spanish Bane and movie Bane. Crickets. <laughs> Lol. But, uh, all right. And since you've given your pitch a short bit ago, like I said, but like he said, everything. Everything. Find him at Sporkman Studios. You can find me on Twitter at Brainiac420. You can find me everything everywhere else at Bob Jones Comic Wars. And <laughs> different schmerz, baby, exactly. And uh, yeah, with that, I shall bid you folks adieu. And yeah, of course, you, yes, of course, you know the the uh, obligatory have to give it a minute, put it on please stand, uh, put up the please stand by card, and 